Welcome and thank you for joining us at Aliation. We specialize in CAD and CAE training, offering extensive internship and placement programs. On behalf of everyone here at Team Aliation, we'd like to extend our heartfelt thanks for your interest in Aliation's Center of Excellence. We are thrilled to welcome you to Aliation's ANSYS basic training program. Before we delve into the learning process, could we please request you to have a new notebook or register and a pen ready? Creating your own notes will not only aid in understanding the course comprehensively but will also serve as a quick revision tool for any topic, at any time. In session 3, we will be exploring static structural analysis. Before we begin, let's take a quick recap. In the previous session, we have discussed the following topics. What is FEM? Are FEA and FEM different? Advantages of FEA, FEM? Discretization of problem? Why do we carry out meshing? What is DOF, degree of freedom? Element shape characteristics, the 10 questions you should be able to answer. In this section we will learn how to apply loads and constraints in ANSYS, how to perform static structural analysis in ANSYS workbench. In this section we'll explore how engineers use simulations to understand and improve vehicle safety in frontal collisions. These simulations play a pivotal role in analyzing how a vehicle responds during a collision and for designing structures that can effectively absorb and redistribute these forces. At the core of this analysis is the roll cage, a vital part that ensures the cabin stays strong during severe impacts. The roll cage is a complex framework designed to reinforce the vehicle's structure and protect occupants. Understanding its role is crucial for a thorough front impact analysis. To analyze such impacts, we use static structural analysis. This technique involves evaluating how static loads affect structures. By applying it to the roll cage design, we can predict how the roll cage will behave under collision forces, identifying stressors and deformation in the process. In practical applications, these concepts come together through ANSYS Workbench. Here, we can simulate various impact collision situations, including frontal impact analysis, side impact analysis, rear impact analysis, and rollover impact analysis, and analyze the outcomes. When we talk about simulating a frontal impact, the most accurate approach would be to perform a dynamic analysis. This type of analysis would closely mimic the real-world scenario of a collision, capturing the time-dependent responses of the roll cage to impact forces. However, dynamic analysis comes with its own set of challenges. Firstly, dynamic analysis requires a high-quality mesh that accurately represents the geometry of the structure. This level of detail is necessary to capture the complex interactions during an impact. Furthermore, dynamic analysis involves accounting for non-linearities, such as material behavior, large deformations, and contact interactions, which add to the complexity. These factors contribute to a significant increase in computational time and resources. So, if we are in the preliminary stages of design and our goal is not the precise values of stress or deformation but rather an overall understanding of the stress distribution and deformation patterns, we might opt for a simpler route, that is, static analysis, Static analysis gives a general idea of where the structural members may experience stress concentrations and how the overall deformation shape looks. This insight is invaluable for making initial design decisions, such as where to reinforce the structure, where to add members, or how to adjust thicknesses to improve performance. Before we begin using the software, let us have a look at the problem statement. In this problem statement, we are focusing on a static structural analysis of a roll cage designed for a vehicle. The specific scenario under consideration is a frontal impact event. The key parameters for this analysis are The total force to be applied to the roll cage is specified as 10,000 newtons. This force represents the impact load that the roll cage is expected to withstand during the collision. The constraints for the analysis are located at the suspension mounting points at the rear of the vehicle. These constraints will hold the roll cage in place. The desired outputs from this analysis are the equivalent stress and total deformation. These outputs will give insight into the strength and durability of the roll cage when subjected to the specified frontal impact force. Now, let's delve into the practical aspect and explore how to perform front impact analysis using the static structural analysis system in ANSYS Workbench. Now, we will open ANSYS Workbench window. In the toolbox, double-click on Static Structural to open that analysis system in Project Schematic. Then, right-click on Geometry and click on New Design Modeler Geometry. Now the software is starting Design Modeler, as shown in the status bar. Once the Design Modeler is opened, first we change the unit system to millimeter, and then to import the CAD model, go to File, click on Important External Geometry File, 
Select the CAD model and click on Open. The model has now been imported, but to view the model in the graphics window, you need to click on Generate. Before you click on Generate, make sure to change the Line Bodies option to Yes. This is because we are importing the line geometry. Once you change it to Yes, click on Generate. Before diving into the static structural analysis, it's essential to perform a free free run analysis on the 1D roll cage CAD model. This preliminary step checks the model's connectivity, ensuring that our simulation accurately represents the physical structure. In our ANSYS Basic to Professional Training program, we will learn how to perform free free run analysis to verify CAD model connectivity. Additionally, we will explore various methods of connecting disjointed CAD models. Sign up today and embark on a valuable learning journey with Team Aliation. Now, let's continue with the ongoing static structural analysis. You can see the CAD model on your screen in the graphic window. If you want to get rid of these arrows, you can go to View tab and select Cross-Section Alignments to hide the arrows on the geometry. As you can see from the tree outline, there are 37 parts and 37 bodies, which means each line is created separately in the CAD software. As all these lines are separate parts, we need to make sure that all these lines are connected and form a single part. To connect all the lines, go to Tools tab, select Connect option. Now to select all the lines to connect, click anywhere on the screen and press Ctrl plus A on your keyboard. A shortcut key to select all the displayed lines, and click on Apply. Select the appropriate tolerance value, which is the gap between the disconnected lines. Select the options as they appear on the screen. To delve into the various methods of connecting lines and to explore the different options provided in the details of Connect. Do consider registering for our ANSYS Basic to Professional Training Program for a comprehensive learning experience. Once you enter all these details, click on Generate to connect the lines. Even after you do this, you can see there are still three parts, three bodies which are not connected. To connect them, you need to increase the tolerance value. If the gap is more than the tolerance value specified, the lines will not connect. To increase the tolerance, right-click on Connect, click on Edit Selections, change the tolerance value to 1 mm, and again click on Generate. Now you can see we have a single part which means that the lines are connected. Now let's see how to assign a cross-section to the connected lines. To do that, go to Concept, select Cross-Section, and select Circular Tube. Enter inner and outer radii as 22 and 24 mm respectively. When you enter inner radii as 22, it is going to show you an error. As currently, the outer radii is smaller than the inner radii. To resolve this issue, you can first enter the outer radii and then, enter the inner radii, and click on refit. To fit to screen, now let's assign the circular tube cross section to the line body. Click on the line body. You can see a yellow box next to cross section. Click on the drop down button and select circular tube 1. Now the circular tube cross section is assigned to the line body. To view this graphically, go to view, select cross section solids. After doing that, you can see a cross-sectional view of the 1D line geometry in the graphics window. With this, I have completed all the steps in the design modeler window. Now I'll minimize this window to go back to project schematic. I will now double-click on model to open the mechanical window. You need to wait for a few minutes before the mechanical window opens. So now the mechanical window is open here. First, expand the geometry by clicking on plus to see the type of geometry and also check with the materials used. When you click on the line geometry under details of line geometry, you can check which material is assigned to the geometry. If you wish to change, you can directly search for a material in this search box and assign. Also, you can check which cross section has been assigned to the line body. The model type is currently set to beam. Let's now see how to generate the mesh under details of mesh. I will first define the element size, enter element size as 10 mm, and then right click on mesh, generate mesh. This is how the software has meshed the 1D line geometry with beam elements of element size 10 mm. In order to simulate a frontal impact scenario, we need to apply force at the front end and fix the rear suspension mounting points. Now I want to apply fixed support at the rear end. To do that, right click on static structural, select, insert, click on fixed support. 
You can click on Show Mesh icon for Mesh Preview. Now using the Vertex Selector, select the rear suspension points of the vehicle. I'm assuming that the suspension points are at these locations, hence I'm completely constraining these locations. In our CAE Basic to Professional Training program, we have explained in detail on how to apply constraints on other locations using nodes on the mesh model. Once you have selected all the points, click on Apply. I will again right click on Static Structural and select Remote Displacement. Because at front suspension points it is essential to impose a constraint in the vertical Z direction. This constraint serves to prevent uplift of the vehicle when external forces are applied. Hence, I will fix Z translation and make free all other degrees of freedom. Once you select the front suspension points, click on Apply. Enter 0 next to Z component to fix Z translation. Now to apply force, right click on static structural, click on force. Under force details, change defined by from vector to components. Using vertex selector, select the two vertices at the front and click on apply. To equally distribute 10,000 newtons on each vertex under X component. Enter minus 5000 to apply force in the negative x direction. To see all the applied loads and constraints, click on static structural from the tree outline. Now let's define the outputs to get the total deformation. Right click on solution, go to insert, deformation, and select total deformation. To see the stresses, again right click on solution, go to insert, beam tool. Select beam tool. Once the outputs are specified, you can right click on solution and click on solve to start the solution process or you can directly click on the solve icon from the toolbar. If you see all green text below solution, that means the results have been evaluated. To make XZ plane parallel to my screen, I will click on the normal Y axis. Now let's view the results. Click on total deformation under solution and click on play button to play the animation. To see stresses, expand beam tool, click on direct stresses. Click on minimum combined stress to see compressive bending stresses. Click on maximum combined stress to see the tensile bending stresses. To scale up the deformation, go to results. You can change the default scale value to true scale. Increase the scale to see a larger deformation. So this is how you perform front impact analysis. Front impact analysis allows engineers to assess the roll cage's effectiveness in protecting occupants during frontal collisions, ensuring structural integrity and optimizing the design for crashworthiness with safety standards. Thank you for watching this session. In the next session, we will cover the following topics. What is steady state thermal analysis? How to perform steady state thermal analysis in ANSYS software? Should you require any updates or additional information from us, please don't hesitate to contact us at support at aliation.com. For more details on CAD and CAE software, do subscribe or follow us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram.